Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on the lecture series computational finance. Today we have question number 23 and this question is based on materials covered in lecture number 10. The question of today is, why do we need Monte Carlo if we have fast Fourier transformation methods for pricing? This question is very practical because it combines uh, different pricing techniques um, and uh, challenges a student or challenges you on answering why actually we would use Monte Carlo methods that we know they are not the fastest if we have very efficient techniques for pricing of, for example, European type of options using cost method or uh, fast Fourier transformation methods. Uh, the key point here is that in practice we need both approaches. We need very fast methods for pricing of uh, European type of products and we also need methods which are maybe not the fastest, but allow us for flexibility. And this is related to uh, pricing of exotic derivatives. Typically, when we talk about the pricing of exotic derivatives, there could be a lot of features, uh, a structure product, which could be very complicated, that it cannot be easily uh, implemented and derived and used by a fast Fourier transformation. And on the other hand, if we have a very exotic derivative, it is often not necessary to have it, the pricing doesn't need to happen extremely fast. On the other hand, if we talk about European type of options, then it's always preferred to have extremely fast pricing for that. The reason is that fast Fourier transformations and pricing of European type of options, it is often or mainly used for calibration. So if we wish to price an exotic derivative, uh, we need to find, uh, first we choose a pricing model, then we need to establish model parameters that's going to be used to price of this exotic derivative. In order to find the parameters of the model, we have to calibrate the model to other derivatives available in the market. As you can imagine, exotic derivatives are not very liquid because they are exotic. Uh, otherwise, they'll be not exotic. So we have exotic derivative that likely we cannot use other exotic derivative in the market to price, to calibrate our model. However, if we have exotic derivative, likely we also have European type of options. And then those options will be used to calibrate our model. So in essence, what happens in this whole uh, structured product pricing is that we calibrate model to simple instruments like European type of options. And then we kind of extrapolate this information to price exotics. And that's not always, uh, we, there are cases uh, in which this kind of strategy may not work very well, especially if we talk about the local volatility models that may uh, that kind of approach may lead you to uh, mispricings. However, in this course, we focus mainly on, lo on uh, stochastic volatility models. Those are less sensitive to this type of uh, problem. So uh, let's look into maybe a few points which I have prepared here. Uh, Monte Carlo methods are mainly used for pricing mainly exotic callable derivatives. Fourier methods uh, offer a great speed for European type of options. This is also one of the reasons why in the course and also everywhere in the literature, uh, people always focus on pricing of European options. At some point you may ask why actually there is so much attention to European type of options. Those are already known, let's say using Black-Scholes model, why would anyone bother to price those options? And the reason is that this the, the pricing of European options, it's, it's a building block to, um, that is used to calibrate our model and then that calibrated parameters, calibrated model can be used for something much more exotic, not typical plain vanilla options. For that reason, if you develop a model, it is very important that your model is not only pricing well exotics, but also allows you to evaluate prices for European type of options very fast, very efficiently. If you cannot do efficient pricing, then this model will likely not be used in practice because you will not be able to calibrate the model parameters to market data. And this is the same case as an example. If you consider Heston model, for example, with time-dependent parameters, so not piecewise constant, for which we know we can do some efficient calculations. But if you just consider generic case with time-dependent parameters in the Heston case, then we know already, as we know from this lecture, uh, from, the, from the course, uh, evaluation of the characteristic function or ODEs is, has to happen numerically. This means that this calculation of characteristic function will be very slow. This means 
time-dependent parameters for Hester model will actually uh, be so slow that you will not be able to calibrate your model uh, to the market data. Therefore, you cannot even use for exotic derivative because it's so inefficient. It is actually, there is a solution if you consider time-dependent but piecewise constant parameters in the Heston model, then we are able to find a characteristic function in a very efficient way such that this calibration can still take place. However, we cannot have, let's say, full flexibility, but we need to assume some kind of time-dependent but piecewise constant parameters. The pricing uh, speed is crucial, like I just mentioned, in the calibration phase where many iterations occur. So as you know, in the calibration, we are not uh, choosing one set of parameters. The optimizer typically will try all sorts of combinations of your model parameters. So the, the, we'll be searching for the best combination of the parameters such that the error, so the difference between option prices or implied volatilities from your model and the market will be the smallest. So for that, you need thousands of hundreds of thousands of evaluations. Therefore, every millisecond that you can uh, save, it is very important. And however, there is also another point that it's important to keep in mind, that uh, if we consider exotic derivatives, like for example, Bermuda's, it is still possible to derive fast Fourier transformation. So we can find this uh, uh, pricing with very efficient pricing for Bermuda's, for example, using Heston model or Black-Scholes, or other models. However, uh, this approach is not very generic. It means that if you would add to Bermuda some kind of feature, extra callable feature or extra parameter, very likely you will need to have uh, redirect the whole method to find this pricing. However, in the case of Monte Carlo, the flexibility is something which is inherited in that framework. Therefore, in a FFT, you cannot, uh, typically you would not choose between FFT and Monte Carlo. Typically, those two methods work together. One is used for pricing of something more exotic, and fast Fourier transformation is used for calibration. So you cannot typically, in practice, choose between the two. Of course, if you can derive generic uh, fast Fourier transformation, that would be ideal. But in, in, let's say, in the most generic uh, scenario, we use fast Fourier transformations for calibrations, uh, and Monte Carlo we would use for uh, pricing of exotic derivative. On the other hand, we could also consider uh, PDE methods, those could be also applied uh, as this is, you could consider something in between fast Fourier transformation and uh, Monte Carlo because we could price callable products uh, rather efficiently, but there is, uh, uh, let's say, a little bit of less flexibility in terms of payoff. These payoffs would need to be re-specified uh, for every scenario. So I hope this explains you and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.